Good afternoon, everyone. I am here with what's pretty soon to be is going to be just a living legend himself, Anthony Carter, as he joins me to talk some AFL because it was insane from what we saw, Anthony, within the first, I want to say what, like week, two weeks leading into the AFL season. And a lot of us had a lot of questions, but there was no answers coming at least until last week. <laughs> well, thank you for a compliment. Um, yeah, you're talking. What I did, it started April 26, and I won't forget that day because <laughs> since then it's even the AFL has just been picking up a whole lot. And the good thing is, is what I've seen from late, it's starting to slow down as far as news wise, which is good, and I'm hopeful for that. Um, but certainly, there's still a lot of uh, questions that need to be answered for sure. There is going to be. And the good thing is with uh, we saw, or at least those at least who follow the AFL on their YouTube last week, they, they got together with Jeff Fisher and Chris Chetty, and they talked about how they were going to rebuild this from, unfortunately, from the bottom up. Because as things unfolded, we started getting to, to learn that the Philadelphia Soul, for example, they folded, Louisiana Voodoo folded, and then it just, that pitfall started coming around more and more. Then it's a shame because a lot of us wanted to see what was going to end up happening, especially with the soul. I mean, the last time we remember was with uh, was back in 2017 when they were back-to-back -back Arena Bowl champs. And then COVID hit and, and things kind of fell apart from that point from the NFL and then folded. And then it was brought back, which a lot of people thought it was going to be Jaws and Bon Jovi all over again. But unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, the way it came down, I heard it was uh, supposed to be the new ownership, but because there wasn't their lack of communication, um, the lack of the venues being built out the way they're supposed to have, then that's when everything happened. And then that's more of the fallout from when we started hearing from different conversations because the rumors started and all this crazy nonsense was happening. There was people putting stuff out on Instagram that were stuck here at the airport. But thankfully, it seems like with Chris and Jeff, they're starting now to rebuild this entire process. And we're learning from uh, recent news is that come next week, or maybe as much as early as the end of this week, there's going to be a new schedule being put out. So basically it comes from, we saw week one leading up now until week four, but it could be now the possibility of the rebuild from week five leading out to week 11. Yeah. And you know, I, th I think that makes sense considering everything that just happened. So from the soul, to the Voodoo, to the Georgia Force, Iowa Rampage, uh, Minnesota Myth. And um, it was supposed to be Oregon Blackbears, but they struck, struck a deal with the AFL last minute. So they were able to get back within the league. So um, I think it makes sense. We had all those changes in the first half of the season and so much happened left and right, impacted all the teams, whether it was games rescheduled or canceled, every team was impacted in some way in shape or form. So I think it makes sense to start over from week five, moving on, kind of put what happened previously in the past and kind of treat it as a, I was on a previous podcast and, you know, we were saying like treating it as a, a pre, those preseason games in a way, treating those as preseason games and um, and just, just building from there and kind of really starting, I've called it the AFL 3.5. So uh, <laughs> making that return 3.5 and, and, and building uh, for the future, because you know, we, it's it's um, it and because no one wants to remember this as the relaunch. Unfortunately, we are going to remember this as the relaunch of the AFL, but you don't want to continue that down that path, which is why the owners had to make the move that they did and and changing uh, leadership and, and ownership, taking back over ownership as far as G6 Sports. Did. I think with Chris and, and it sounds like we're both with Chris and, and Jeff being on a podcast last week again with the AFL. And I think Chris was really more inspiring to at least let us know that let's we're back. We're going to be back better than ever. We're going to rebuild this thing and build it the way it's supposed to be. And I know they asked Jeff Fisher to be right now the interim commissioner and, and not to say that he won't stay on full time, but at least he's on at the moment. Uh, Chris being the CEO now of the AFL is just what they mentioned last week at least gave us some sort of hope that this will turn around and more for the fans too, because you, I mean, you had fans who bought season tickets. Everybody wanted to see what the product was out in the field. And then when you start seeing like, okay, I invested here into the AFL and now you're telling me that things are going to be turning upside down for the most part, but they to switch around and give us that hope 
that things are going to get better. And we believe that we are. There's nothing that Chris or Jeff said anything indifferent in that podcast that they're not going to not believe in this product. But it's also got to be hard, too, if we really think about it as, you know, whether it's a podcast, broadcasters, radio announcers, as we think about it, it's the most concerning thing that could happen because some of us who call the games at the, at, you know, at your arenas, all of us were up in the air thinking like, okay, what's going to happen? Are we done here? Are we just forfeiting the rest of the season? Or are we only going to have five games? So I'd like to get at least your thought and your process of how you felt when at least listening to what Chris and Jeff had to say to just make everybody confident enough to know that they are coming back and it's going to be a lot better, especially coming into the 2025 season. Yeah, I think that interview was, was critical, right? I think you had to have them speak out, right? Because for once, as a uh, someone in the media business who, um, as a, who used to be a reporter and now working in the PR space, I can truly say I appreciate the transparency, which is something that we have received from the AFL really since before the beginning of the season. It kind of just went silent on all platforms, which is why I started doing more digging and reporting because people are looking for answers. You know, I was trying to figure out win our next game so I can I was trying to recruit some writers to cover the teams but I didn't hear any information on credentials or press releases so there was all over the place but no one was was and reaching out to the AFL with comment on the allegations about player pay and things like that and so for Chris uh, from G6 for him to apologize when he really didn't need to but for him to do that anyway and then for Jeff Fisher to, to be as upfront and honest as he can. Same for Chris as well. It was it was refreshing to hear. And I think it was refreshing for the fans too. I was looking through some of the comments and the replies to kind of see how fans felt. And the overall majority of people actually appreciated that and how much detail they were able to give. Certainly there was, of, of course, I think a lot of other things that they didn't touch on, but you know, I'm not gonna hold that over them. I'm hoping we get those answers in the future but i think for now i think that was that was a, a a good interview good um you know i was transcribing it took me a while to transcribe everything for the article but uh it was it was i thought it was perfect and i hope they can continue that more but more so in a sense of reaching out to these other media outlets you know so i definitely think i, I like that they utilize their own afl podcast but there's other outlets that cover the league. And the reason why I mention that is because covering on your own AFL podcast, it may not, you're going to get certain questions tailored. You know, if you're reaching out to those other media professionals and, and blogs that cover the league, you're going to get questions that you may not expect. But that that way, you can be even more transparent up front and you'll still keep that trust among the fans because the, the fans are, are, are what... Uh, is, is driving the league, you know? So, um, yeah, transparency is huge. It was because you got to figure, like you just said now, when, you, when you're trying to reach out to the AFL and there was no response back, it really started making you feel like, what happened here? Like, at first, it was gung-ho. We heard about how the launch was supposed to happen. Um, unfortunately, and, and thank God Chris decided to come back because how things had fallen out for him, they basically told him, like, we, we hear you, but we, we want you just to sit back and, and just enjoy the ride. And so not only was the, as he stated, it was the, the insult, the injury, when they decided to launch the season on his birthday, which he just thought, okay, you know, how much salt can you rub in the wound? He still did come back and say, no matter what, he's putting that to the side because it is about the fans. And, and, and you're right, because within the comments of that day of when they when they put it out there live, you can start seeing the confidence at least building back. Not maybe everyone is completely confident because we're still going to have questions no matter what. And so we see the product re-revealed and see where they're going. Uh, they talked about relaunching the website, uh, the AFL.com, so that everybody didn't have to go to all the different ones. Because if you look for a lot of stuff in the AFL, it would send you to like arenafootball.com, uh, arena.com, arenafootball.usa.com. There was just all these different places and they're finally starting to get it to like, nope, we're just going to have one spot because the other thing as you mentioned even reporting for the afl at least running you know on your behalf to bring everybody in it was tough because you don't get any stats so we we saw game one and then you're looking around for this stuff it's like where is it we don't we can't compare our notes from what we saw on the field and then to write that or 
talk about it on a radio broadcast because it wasn't there. So the good thing is that Chris was mentioning and Jeff that they are going to start, you know, covering the stats so that even for myself, for example, I do the Spanish play by play for the Orlando Predators. And the tough part for me is I get there to the venue and I get the rosters. At least I know from the Predators side and we get the, the visitor side, but it's usually about five minutes before the game starts. But then there's no stats. So either I got to go off a of memory from last week from the previous game or whatever I end up writing down. So the steps in progress to where they're getting to, at least they are putting the right foot forward because it is about the fans. I mean, if you really look at it, if you and I weren't doing coverage on our own behalf to make sure we can get the word out there, we would be just like everybody else, just, you know, twirling our thumbs and wondering, like, what is truly going on? But it does seem like they're finally getting things back on track. We're still waiting to hear what the new official schedule is going to be. But again, reverting it back to Chris and Jeff, at least there is confidence in what we hope is going to be the resurrection of at least this season, but more importantly, coming up next season uh, for 2025. Right. And, you know, I, I think it, in, in a way, I, I hope it, it builds player and coaches' trust, mostly from the teams that folded, right? Because, I, like, one of the, men, the, the questions that, you know, that was saying that um, haven't, haven't been answered yet was player pay and lodging and, and all of that and meals and all that. That came up from a lot of different players from different teams. So it seemed like that was that was a trend going on. So I think one of those things addressing addressing that if if true. And also securing um and kind of reassuring your current players and, and, and coaches and kind of clarifying what is the actual financial model. So I hope I can get those questions those answers soon. Because this seemed to be confusion where the AFL would provide part of the player pay and then the owners would provide that and travel and all that. So there's there's just some confusion back and forth with that. Um and but then also as far as the, the stats as well, you know, I remember years ago covering the league, uh Everything just seemed in order, right? Where they had a website that would you could follow along the game. It was like a game tracker, kind of like what NFL, all the major sports have, like a game tracker. Um, and it was just a fish. I wish I could remember the name of it to suggest that to them to kind of use. But I think if you rope in other people that have worked with the AFL in the past on that side of things, excellent what they did, what so-and-so this, I think that would be very, very beneficial. So that way they can be like, okay, I see how this happened. Let's see how we can incorporate a little bit of that as we continue to, to still build out this league. I think so. And it's it's really, really important for that transparency, as you mentioned earlier, too, that we have to know. I mean, no matter what, things, every relationship in the world, we hope that everything, we can hold hands and move on to the future be just fine. But it's the repairing of that relationship, especially with the fan base, because just like you said, there were the questions between who was paying for what exactly. We would love to know all this stuff. And, and they may not share it initially, but eventually I'm quite sure as long as they put it uh, in a in a PR move saying that, OK, here's the question you guys have. We're going to answer it accordingly. But they want to make sure without throwing I'm very sure they don't want to throw anyone under the bus more than it's already been thrown. They're now just trying to reroute this and make sure they put it back in route so it can be smooth sailing from this point forward. The only thing would be, uh, as you stated, all we want is to make sure that going forward, we can have all the info that we need. So from week to week, when we're reporting it, if we're writing it, like you said, with your writers, if we have that clarity so that we know we, we have stats to base it upon, for the following season, we can go back and say, okay, here's who they played. Now, I can talk about as far as the Predators coming up and playing the Nashville Cats. At least I'll have something to go back with come the previous year and say, all right, the last year, here were the stats, here's what happened. And, and I know it takes a lot for all that stuff coming to play. All I'm hoping for, I'm pretty sure, like you and everyone else, is the definitive answers and then let us know exactly how this looks moving forward. And I'm quite sure within hopefully the next week or two, we'll start getting those answers. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, um, I kind of mentioned what I uh, what I said earlier about building that fan. You don't want to lose fans' trust because they are already, a lot of people going into the season are already doubted the league. Um, 
because you don't want to see a team full comeback, full players leaving, players not coming back, players speaking out against the owners, teams fold again, league fold. So, you know, it, you don't want to buy, if you're a fan, I'm like, I don't know if I want to buy season tickets because I don't know if they're going to play a home game next week. Also, you know, you don't want to keep changing games midweek as well. That's another thing, right? Because you're talking about your players are, you know, studying game film. I know I talked to a lot of players who said they couldn't even study game film because there wasn't something set up for that. So, you know, it's it's, it's, it's one of those, uh, it's interesting. For what I think happened was that when the league was going through this revamp, I think, because if you've seen on the, the, the AFL.com website, I don't know if they changed it or not, but it was on there um, going into the season. It seemed like this, the AFL kind of wanted to go in a new direction and kind of wanted to let people know that the past AFL ownership has failed. Here's how we're going to make it better. So I think kind of what you saw was like a building from the ground up. But I think with that, they wanted to build for the ground up, but not utilize, <coughs> excuse me, not utilize what worked, uh, uh, what was used in the previous previous ownership because I think they want to be different. And so I think that's what happened. And I think that's why you see a lot of, I think it was a lot of struggles early on that I, that I think they weren't prepared for. Yeah, well, we hope to get things turned around. And if, and if you guys have any comments for myself and Anthony, make sure that you guys, you can reach out to us on the social medias. For Anthony, it's A Carter underscore TV, if I remember correctly. Yep, A Carter underscore TV uh, at Arena Insider and uh, ArenaInsider.com. Now, make sure that's the other thing, too, because I want to get to that, but I'm glad you just mentioned it. Can you let everyone know the reason why you're behind and running the Area Insider, Arena Insider? Sure. <clears throat> uh, it, I initially started Soul Insider because I used to always go to Philadelphia Soul Games. And so eventually when I was brand, branching into the journalism space, I started Soul Insider, just covering the Philadelphia Soul. That was at a time there was, I think, either 12 to 16 teams. I can't remember how many teams were in the league at that time. This was about 2014, right around that. So um, eventually teams dropped off. So it went down about eight teams, I believe. So I was like, let's cover the entire league. So I changed it from Soul Insider to Arena Insider. And I just kind of uh, used that to, to cover the entire league. I had a lot of great writers that, that covered different cities. I called them insiders. I actually have one now covering the Washington Wolfpack. Um, he's trying to get in uh, the journalism space and sports space. So I kind of got him writing for the site as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of what I, why I wanted to start it. And really, since the the situation that happened with the AFL over the last couple of weeks, I think it really made me realize how uh, unique Arena Insider is because insider, like that word, you're getting inside information rather than something that no other competitive AFL blog is covered from what I've seen, right? Outside of uh, posting on social media. So I think that's kind of what made it different. I think a lot of people like that side of things, like like the investigative reporting. And as a reporter, I love doing investigative stories and holding people accountable. That's 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 why I also got into the business. I was telling you why I got into the news business. So I got to have that opportunity. So um, it kind of just really came full circle for me. And, um, I appreciate everyone that's uh, supported the website and the, the YouTube channels and, and, and all of that. It's, um, as an independent journalist, it means a lot more than people know. Well, make sure you guys definitely follow, if anything. And if any comments, write them. We, we love to hear from you guys and hear from the AFL community to make sure we can answer whatever question we could possibly get answered for you guys. Uh, then maybe someone that you had a question that no one got back to you for. Although I will have to say, Anthony, I, I will have to go one day, have a complete different show because I'm pretty sure, as you said, as a journalist, there's probably some juicy stuff and I'm, you know, not ever putting anybody's name or anything else out there, but just kind of getting to know how you're able to come around the stories because you're right. When you hold someone accountable, you know, it's different. We're not, you know, you and I can have a conversation with someone. It could be just a general conversation. It's no big deal. And sometimes they'll let what I like to call like a little nugget out. I'm like, did he just say something or she say something from a story that was told a while back and now they released something? So as a journalist for you, and it might, you know, matter of fact, I'll ask you now, the toughest part in journalism is 
finding out the truth. What we see today is even harder because you guys try your hardest to make sure that when you are putting something out, you are putting out the, the factual truth. Is it tougher today for that to happen versus what we've seen even from three or four years ago? Oh, most definitely. And I think because, you know, journalists everywhere has a target on their back, right? And the, 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 the expectation, obviously, you know, we're always going to tell the truth, you know, for both sides of the story, be factual, you know, biased, all of that. But I think now more than ever, uh, seems a trend of the public, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of discrediting journalists and, right. and looking down on them. And, and we're already seeing our industry being, uh, it's all my layoffs all the time in the news industry. The pay isn't what it used to be or is not matching up to today's living. So it, it is difficult compared to the last three or four years or so. You're talking the pandemic and, of course, the pandemic um, and, and all of that. And uh, former President Trump as well also played, a, regardless of your political views on that, that, that did play a role. So all that trickled into sports journalism, right? So um, essentially what, what happened with the AFL, when I'm, I'm covering the, the, the league, no one was getting back to me. I would reach out to the league, but there was no response, right? So it, 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 made, it made it difficult to report certain stories because I said I kind of can't. Even some interviews, I've done, a, I've done a quite a few interviews, but I haven't released it yet because it's, it's that sensitive where I, I'm like, I need the AFL comment on this because I can't, I'm gonna drag myself into a lawsuit and I have to be fair to the AFL, you know? So it, it's, it's difficult, it is difficult. Um, and, and so that's why on interviews, I don't even, I don't even give my thoughts when I do, um, my interviews, if you've seen on my YouTube channel, uh, I just let them talk because <laughs> I don't know anything. I'm just trying to hear, you know? So I just ask questions and let them go. Um, uh, so, um, it, it, it's difficult, but I think, uh, you, you just learn how to, how to push through and try to, to, to make sure you say, uh, you know, when I, when I coach younger journalists, I, I always tell them, make sure you say so-and-so says, so-and-so claims, alleges, things like that until you until you know for sure. Yeah. No, that's very true. Very true. Although some people probably say like when uh, it's funny because if you if you bring up, I don't care what president is in, in the past, future, present one. It, it's funny because that's when people you get some people like, ooh, and some people end up cringing. But yeah, it's no one's ever going to agree upon every single thing in life. We, we all have our valued opinions. And, you know, and, and that's the best part about life is because think about it. If we were all the same, if we all if we were all think the same life, truthfully, would be boring because it's like, OK, I'm just I'm going to believe everything Anthony says. I'm going to believe everything the angel says. I'm going to believe everything that this president says. Then it's like, all right, we have our varied opinions. And I think that's what makes life interesting because we can find out eventually a truth because it's, you know, our parents used to tell us, well, there's three sides, every story, your side, their side, and then there's the truth. And that's what you try to find out as a journalist, which is a great part. And that we still need today in, in society because without you guys, you know, all we're just reading, all we're doing is just reading and trying to figure out for ourselves what is true and what's not. So I thank you on that behalf for making sure that you still believe in your journalism. Yeah, and I appreciate that. And that's that's where I, when I seen what was going on, I put a, I posted a tweet and uh, I got to I got to search through all my tweets to find it. <laughs> uh, but I posted a tweet. It was right when a Philadelphia soul situation happened. And I posted that. I didn't expect it to get the amount of retweets and likes that it did. Um, but when I posted that, and I was like, wow, okay, all this is going on apparently with the fill up his soul. Let me reach out to the lead, who probably won't respond, but I gotta reach out anyway. So they never responded to that. And then when I seen that happening, and then I was seeing postings from some other players on other teams about the same thing happening to them. And, but the other, the difference with the soul, the soul I learned from uh, someone within the team, but the, the the person from the other team, it was posted on like a private AFL group. I don't report on, on what goes on in the private AFL groups because it's not really public-ish. So, you right. know, so I kind of I kind of separate the two from that. But I posted that and I was looking at the AFL 
and on their Twitter and on their social media person. I call them out the social media person because that, they're hired just for social media. But they're posted as if everything is normal. Like, we're excited for the first week of football, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. These are going on. Like, it seemed like a, a disregard, and you got an agent publicly calling out the league. Like, my quarterback is not being treated right, not being paid, blah, 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 blah. So all of this was happening. And then I'm still seeing other blogs not even addressing it. So I'm like, okay, well, I got it. Someone has to talk about it because what how you know I'm 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 a reporter first and I'm always gonna stay in the middle regardless. You know, I'm just I'm just telling the story. Right. Um so I made the point where I said from here on out, we're only because of what's going on in the AFL, we're only gonna be focusing on these stories that's having an impact that we're not going to focus on game highlights right now because I, I feel like it would just be we're just disregarding or I feel like we're picking a side by that point by ignoring what's going on you know so that that was my whole take and then when you saw when it started snowballing with other teams and I saw it just kind of I said well I guess I'll, I'll be the one to talk about it it's okay though, because a lot of people sure. end up reaching out, and that's a good thing. Because the same way you and I connected, because I asked you a question as well when it came out to the soul to see if you know if you had any insight what was going on. But hopefully, all this will be turned around. We think so. I mean, again, according to what Chris and Jeff had talked about during the podcast, it sounded like they are going to get this ship righted for not only this season but coming up next season. So again, if you guys want to reach out to us once again, a Carter underscore TV. Uh, as well as once again, please mention not only the website and uh, any affiliation as far as where they can get in contact with you again, Anthony. Um, yeah, yeah, a card on score TV, or if you want to shoot me an email, a card at the x1media.com. Uh, I did want to mention also, I am so x1 media is my media company, parent company of Arena Insider. I am working on a documentary about the AFL 3.0 slash 3.5, I guess, still. <laughs> um, so I am working on that. So if there's anyone that has any highlights from games that they went to, photos or anything like that, feel free to send it over and I'll credit you, of course. Um, so I just need some extra B-roll with that. And so um, anything, video, highlights, interviews, photo with a player, anything like that, that'd be great. All right. You can also reach out to me as well at Broad ST South Pod and or if you go to BroadSTSouth.com, the website, uh, you can see the contact me there and you guys can write whatever. Like I said, the questions, we'll get an answer for you guys come next week because hopefully Anthony and myself will be doing this on a weekly segment so you guys can stay informed. We'll get you guys as much information as possible leading up throughout the entire season. And who knows? It'll roll into possibly into the next season. So, Anthony, thank you very much. We'll talk again, uh, talk again come next week, and I'm pretty sure throughout the week as well. As we, If we have any breaking news or anything that happens, we'll get back together and let everyone know exactly what we've heard. Absolutely. Anytime. I'm always down. I appreciate it. Um, and it's been quiet in the, the, the news world. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. I just knocked the wood. But it's, it's, it's slowed down, so... Uh, I just jinxed myself. I just know it. I'm waiting on something. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <I'm glad. laughs> That's all right. It happens. Don't worry. I'm pretty sure something to be talked about. There's always chatter going on one way or the other. Cardinal sin and news. Never say it's slow. I deserve yep. that, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Well, Anthony, I appreciate your time. And for everyone else, don't forget, you can also watch uh, Pete Shepard in the morning from 7 to 10 a.m. I'm Angel Martinez, the co-host and executive producer for Red Time Media. And you are listening to my...